restart. Okay, mm. all right. Just for organization purposes. Ah, uh, koko wa doko. So where is here? Where are we? Yep. Jack wa furuiru. Hmm. Ude. Close. It means hand rather than arm. Remember how you say hand in Japanese? Uh, hmm, it's just not ute. It's, it's just te. Yube. Te. That's a good ah, guess too, because yubi means finger. Mm. You went too big and then you went too small. <laughs> So that means Jack Fureiru Te De. So Jack Furui. Furui means. Uh, to... furueru. Um, furueru means to shake. That mm, shivers. To shake. So to shake his hands. Yeah. Um, we have the particle de here. You know what de tells us? Is that like, no, that was te, then something else. Yep, this is a particle right here. Mm. So there's multiple meanings de can have. If de, for example, is attached to a location, then we're talking about a place in which a verb is occurring in. However, te isn't really a location in this context. Uh, we're not inside some kind of God's hand or something. So because of that, this de is more about how do we do the verb. So it's very similar to yoni, except there's no metaphors here. So uh, so de is how we do a verb. So the verb is way down here at the end of the sentence. So what is the verb of the sentence anyway? It is... What is it? It is something. It go. Akita. Yep, Akita. You know what Akita means? Akita. Page yo Akita. Akita is to open. Yep. So how does he open something? How, how does he open it? Mm. Does he open it with his foot? Open it with magic? Mm. How does he do it? So, so, so he shakes his hands. So his hand is shaking as he opens the item, right? He opens mm. it with a shaking Hi. hand. So you're thinking when you're saying shaking hands, like you have a hand, someone else has a hand, and you put your hand inside of their hand. Uh, That would have a different verb. I don't know what. <laughs> or if you were like, Shaking mm -hmm. your hand, like waving your hand, that'd be furu, just the verb furu. Uh, but this is furu edu, which is to shake in a shivering like way. So he, he's nervous, in other Hi. words. Hi. So let's read the rest of the sentence. Uh, saki, saki made, mite ita, a kyoru. So the sentence ends when we see the little circle parts. So if you pause whenever like the line ends, they're going to get very confused if you don't have the rest of the sentence. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Kyoryu zukan no peiji. Oh, that's it. Okay. Zukan no. Hi. So first off, we got oh, a Kyoryu. Well, the full thing is some mm. Jaku wa furueru te de saki made mita. Uh, so one thing we have is a kyoryu zukan. Do you know what a kyoryu zukan is? A picture diction dictionary of yes, dinosaurs. Exactly. Um. So Jack did something to this picture, this this book earlier today. That's the made saki made. That's um earlier. Saki made. What did he do to this? Book? So he saw. Yes. He was looking at this um picture book a little bit ago. Um, and now what is he doing to the picture book? 
Segundo page, oh, stop. So he's opening up the picture book with his shivering, shaking hands. Perfect. And here is our next sentence. Uh, um, no kishiki to. That is. It's over outside. here means ato. Close, soto. Soto, hi. Soto no kishiki to. Asukan no. E o. Nandomo. 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 Kiku. Kiku. Rabete miru. You know what this is. You know it's not Kiku. So you read it right um, over here. So you know it's not Kiku. Uh, you're probably a little confused because there's a ku after it and it doesn't normally have a ku. It, it's because it's it's a very specific kind of conjugation going on. This is miru. What does miru mean? Mm. This is miru to see. Yes. So what's going on here, which is why it's confusing, is that we have two verbs. We have miru and we have ku da be ru. Um, so you've definitely seen examples of this, but this is just a confusing example because of what kind of verb miru is. But in Japanese, they make compound verbs by having um, the first half of a verb and the second half of the verb and sticking them together to make a compound verb. So this is a compound verb. Uh, we saw this... Mm. Not that long ago with um like hajimeru, like nobori hajimeru, for example. Um nobori hajimeru. So we have nobori, which con which is the stem form, nobori mas to climb and hajimeru to start. So miru, miru becomes mi mas, right? So when you delete mas, you're just left with me. So it looks weird when you do um like that. So mi hajimeru would be like to begin seeing, which is weird. No one's really ever going to say, I have just begun to see in um, mm -hmm. most contexts, but that's how that would um, conjugate. So you don't see that very often. Um, but that's what's going on here. Do you know what kurabiru means? Kurabiru. Sounds clear. Um, it means to compare. It mm. So he's comparing with using what as like the reference to is he comparing it the weight is he comparing it by touching it how how is he going to be comparing these items by so right. by seeing yes so comparing by eye by comparing using sight so that's why it's me could have do rather than just could have do which just means to compare we're specifically only comparing it using your eyesight so what is he looking at? Soto no keshiki and zukan no e. What are these he two is things? looking at. Du, du, du. So soto no keshiki to zukan no e o. Hmm. So it's not, well it might be. He's looking at the outside of the... So, so outside of the picture dictionary. So let's like go look at the cover. particles here. For one thing, we have the particle to here. And then we have a noun hmm. and a noun. So noun to noun specifically just means and. It's not uh connecting these two in any other way. It's just a very generic and. So you have noun and noun, like dog and cat, you know. Mm. Pen and Hi. food. They're basically two random things. So this toll is telling us that we're going to be comparing item A to item B. Because we have O and toll. So these are the two um, comparing items. So O just goes to the last item listed. So you're right that soto means outside. But we're describe. what do you think is outside? Outside is a keshiki. Keshiki. What is a keshiki? So keshiki means scene. It's mm -hmm. basically um like a scenery type of scene. So soto no keshiki would mean what I see outside or the scenes outside. The view outside is probably how I translate this. So he compares the view outside to what? To the 
Zucano M. So the picture dictionary or yes. the pictures in the picture dictionary. Exactly. He compares the outside view to the picture in the picture dictionary. And how many times does he do that? Nandomo. So how many times? Yeah. Specifically, it just means, yeah, how many times? Uh, but it makes it into not a question. So do you think he compared it sometimes or a lot of times or very little times? Nandomo. Mm, I feel like Nandomo is like, kind of don't know Nandomo times, however many times. Yes. Uh, however many times. Uh. But I would say it would mean a lot of times. It's kind of how we would say it in <clears throat> English. In this type of context. It can mean how many times in certain um, contexts. Specifically, it means like no matter how many times. Nandomo would be more how it, um, <clears throat> like nandemo, no matter what. Um, but yeah, it's basically it means he looked between these two items a lot of times. And we're not actually specifying how many times that is um and here's another one this was our new kanji do you remember what that was pronounced as mm, um was it do you it's actually that's dragon this right here is not dragon dragon's down here though um this means window oh mato. hi 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 so what's the last sentence on this page the last sentence um it is Kumato was a new word. Do you know what Keshki means? We saw this right up here. It means scenery. So so the view. So after he kodabidus, he makes a conclusion that um, the soto and the ehon, the e, they're mataku onaji. What do you think that means? Mataku onaji. Mataku onaji. So they're 100% the same. Yep, they're 100% the same. So what do you think? Um, Mado no soto ni hirogatte iru no wa means. Hmm. Mado no soto ni. So outside the window, hirogatte iru no hiro. So hirogatte iru is like very wide. Yeah. Very wide scenery. Um, it's like wide in a metaphorical sense. So like the thing that spreads out. <laughs> so uh, the scenery that's spreading out from outside of the window. So it, basically it's a way to say your field of view, in other words. Because the window is like a small location. Mm. So when you look out, it's like this, you know. Same as like if you ever see someone like draw an eye and they're like, oh yeah, it goes like that. So that's the view spreading out. It's just a way to specify that. So the view spreading out and what? And and no e tomataku. And the book stopped. Or rather the picture stopped. Oh picture and tomataku. Hi. So mm. to is the and to and mataku is something you knew what it was earlier. But you accidentally were trying to think it's tomaru, which is a verb, which means to stop. But yeah, uh, normally you'd have the kanji there at least, so it helps that a little bit. But yeah, so all together, mm. what is the sentence saying? So, uh, outside the window, the field of view, mm, the field of view. Well, then the next part is hon no e. So the picture book. Tomataku. Picture book and mataku onaji. Oh, so the picture book is the exact same as the field of view of the of outside the window. Hi. Yep, that's exactly what it's saying. So yeah, over here we have the to 
after the wa versus over here we have the toll before the o. It doesn't matter where you put that toll. It can be right before or right after, and it it's exactly the same. It doesn't modify the meaning at all. So if you're saying the view and yeah. the picture, or the or the pic, or you say the view, blah blah blah, and the picture later on, it doesn't make any difference. Um, in Japanese, uh, but yeah, in English we tend to have a we like having them right next to each other in a certain kind of way. Um, so yep, perfect. Um, do you know what this mm. verb is? Oh, that is mm, tobu. Yep, tobu. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so let's read our first sentence. That is potato don ga yu yu to. Um. Mm. Will you up? And then Yon Deiru. Uh the first word is sky. Are you miss? Sora? Yep. Sora o You knew it as tobu, but now it's tondeiru. So it's just been conjugated. Tondeiru. Tondeiru. Mm. So yu yu ends with a to. And an, so what is it modifying? Yu yu to. Yu yu to. So yu yu, I think that's a sound effect. It is, yep. It's modifying yu yu, like flying, flapping your yep. wings. Yep, the way in which you flap your wings. Mm. Uh, you you means leisurely. So basically, it kind of insinuates rather than like he's like flapping a lot like a hummingbird. It's like the opposite. So it's more like he's soaring, like like an eagle or something or an osprey, just kind of or a seagull. Mm. So what does the pterodon do? A pterodon is flapping or leisurely. Sora o yondeiru. So it's flying through the sky in a leisurely manner. Hi, perfect. And now we're seeing G men again. Do you remember what G men meant? G men is the not the floor, the ground. Yes. So now let's go read the next sentence. G men ni, G men ni, G men ni wa kyodai natsu. Natsu daya. Natsu daya. 